Hello, dear viewer. Wanted to make a little video today for any anyone who is feeling either you know down about the current dip in crypto prices, and or is potentially experiencing um, maybe some financial problems as a result of investment that you made when prices were higher and obviously you, you weren't able to afford to make those because you are feeling the pinch uh, right now. Uh, so I just wanted to do, talk to you a bit. Uh, I'd like to cover three things with you today. First would be the recent history of crypto prices. Second is what I will call the ancient history of crypto prices. And then third is I'd like to relate, uh, I guess, just sort of like a personal story that you may be able to identify with and potentially benefit from. Okay, so firstly, uh, to talk about recent history. So uh, if you've looked at, you know, the cryptocurrency prices today, like say the market cap of all cryptos as a whole, uh, they are, of course, markedly lower than what they were like, hey, 90 days ago. Uh, but if we look in just slightly, slightly more back to the big whopping time span of three months ago, yes, my friends, three months ago, we will see that that is the current level of the Cryptosphere's market cap. So yes, so check it out yourself. Go to coinmarketcap.com and in case you don't believe me, and look at the chart because you will see that where the Cryptosphere is right now is exactly where it was a mere three months ago. So that kind of puts things in a little bit of perspective, right? Because I'm, I think a lot of people are probably feeling like, you know, you know like that, that painting of the guy on the bridge and he's like, ah! Um, but one need not feel like that quite so much if one considers even the very recent history to say nothing of ancient history. Let's talk about ancient history next. So it is entirely possible that at this time we are headed into a sort of dark period for cryptocurrency. This is entirely possible. And the last time that this happened, you may not have been around for which it could be why you're feeling afraid now. So the last time that this happened uh, was just after the end of 2013, and it lasted for nearly a year. So just to put like some, some historically influenced expectations out there, consider that this current uh, dark period, if you want to call it that, that we're in, if you even can consider it a dark period, because like I said, we're the same as three months ago, it could get lower. So if it were to, if things were to stay as they are now or get lower, consider that it would be in line with historical expectations for it to last a year, okay? So think about that. Uh, and, and in so doing, you may come to realize like, dang, like this is, this is a long game, isn't it? And it really is. I think that investing in cryptocurrency in the world, in humanity, in the year 2018, is just about the longest game that one could hope to play. The only longer games I could possibly think of are like, the investments, sorry, I have like, yeah, I have a hair on my lip. <laughs> uh, the only longer games I could think that you could play are like the investment that you place in a spouse, you know, like a life partner, or the investment that you make when you choose to have children. Like those are the only more serious investments I can think that you could make other than what you're doing right now. So that's a pretty big thing, consider that. Uh, this is, this is a long game. And, and to, to move on to the third point, um, most people, I think, when they start playing around with cryptocurrency, if they're like, you know, trying to trade or whatever, most people buy high and sell low. 
I know I did, right? That's how I figured out I was not, you know, suitable for the trading game. Uh, and so if that's you, don't feel bad. Uh, overcoming those tendencies to buy high and sell low involves overcoming like a part of your lizard brain, if I can call it that, that gets really excited about shiny things and then gets like sad when they're not so shiny anymore, okay? So that's fine and you can overcome that. It's okay. Uh, and, and in terms of the prices of things that you may be invested in right now, if let's say you only entered the market the last three months, meaning you're definitely down. Let's talk about that because I totally know what that feels like, actually, uh, because that's what happened to me and of course many others um, after the end of the 2013 uh, spike and then major crash. And actually, it was, it was a bigger crash then than it is now. Like it was like an 80% crash and I don't think we're there yet. Uh, and so, if I may just share a story with you about, about how I chose to respond to that. So at that time, around that time, you know, when the crash was like, you know, just like sitting in its doldrums, um, I had an expense come up and nearly everyone I knew advised me to pay this expense. And, and I seriously considered it, but I knew I could only pay it if I sold off um, a portion of my cryptocurrency savings. And a, a significant portion, by the way. And um, I just remember sitting, lying there actually, like looking at the ceiling and thinking that if I were to pay this expense, I would have to sell off a significant chunk of what I considered to be my future. Uh, and so with much thought and deliberation, I eventually decided not to sell off the part of my future and to just forego the expense. And, and these are things that you can do to safeguard your future. Uh, and by that, I mean like sacrifice, basically. Um, yeah, people don't really like to watch videos that encourage you to sacrifice, right? So I don't expect this to be very popular. Um, but yeah, if I may give like another example from my past, um, when I started investing in Dash in particular, this was, I guess, this was like a year later. I don't, Forget the timelines, I don't even know. But basically when I started investing in Dash, um, we were, my partner Pete and I were in, we were living in Mexico. And we had made our expenses so low. Our apartment was $250 a month. If you're from anywhere outside the States, you might be like 250, dang, you know, like, that seems normal or like whatever, <laughs> or you know, in some countries that would be like, oh, you know, that seems pretty normal. For someone coming from the States, $250 a month for an apartment is like, like homeless shelter prices, okay? And uh, so we, we had lowered our expenses a lot. We went without most things, like we didn't have insurance of any kind. We didn't have a vehicle. Uh, we didn't fly places. We, we, uh, yeah, we just, like, we walked. Uh, we, we only, like, cooked food at home, you know, like, from the local grocery store. Stuff like that, you know, like, no daily cappuccinos. Not that I have daily cappuccinos now, because that's crazy. That's really expensive. Um, and so what I'm getting at is that in this market retrace, I can use that, you know, less harsh sounding word in this retrace, this connection. Um, if you are considering selling what feels to you to be like a portion of your future, that is your cryptocurrency holdings, if it's a coin or coins that you really believe in, um, 
I guess I would just invite you to consider living against the grain, right? Because it seems like if you ask around, maybe a lot of people will tell you, oh, like it's totally normal to have a mortgage. In other words, it's totally normal to be in debt. Uh, they'll tell you it's totally you know, normal and expected to have all these different kinds of insurances and to have you know, these things being auto debited from your bank account every month and, you know, to get to Starbucks every day and all these other things. Um, and I would, I would just, in sharing my story, I would like to express to you that it is totally possible <laughs> to live without all of those things and in so doing to protect your future, to not have to sell it today. Because there are people out there waiting for you to sell because they want what you have. Because they know that it's the future and they would love if you would sell at low prices. If you don't want to do that, consider making some sacrifices. Okay? So those three things are really all I wanted to say today. Um, yeah, just remember the last time we entered a dark age, an 80% plunge. It lasted for nearly a year. So adjust your expectations accordingly. And if you prize what you own, consider adjusting your lifestyle accordingly in a way that will allow you to keep it and not have to sell it to the people out there wishing that you would. Okay? All right, that's all I have for you today. Bye-bye.